Welcome to GCSE 3D Design. This is a strand of an art GCSE which is geared um, more towards the 3D aspect um, of design work. So it's a combination really of a design and technology GCSE and an art GCSE. Um, we're looking for students who obviously have an aptitude for drawing as well as making and developing their own ideas uh, and bringing these ideas together with different media and different materials uh, to produce um, responses from designers and artists and for a final outcome that they have come up with themselves. You can see from the areas of study that they can include lots of different um, areas and in uh, David Nieper Academy we will specifically be um, including in there the CAD CAM aspect um, into as many different project areas as possible. The skills that you can see here within the context of 3D design, um, students must be able to demonstrate the ability to use three dimensional techniques uh, and processes appropriate to students' personal intentions. So the things that they want to um, develop and make. So this can include things like model making, constructing, surface treatment of materials and media, um, assembling items and modeling. Using media and materials um, as appropriate to students' personal intentions, for example, that can be drawing materials, could be clay, wood, plastic, plaster, plastic and um, other materials that we, uh, we use within the academy. What qualities make a successful GCC 3D design student? Having taught this for many years and uh, design and technology subjects and art subjects within the faculty, our staff um, know what it takes to be successful in these subjects. So you need to be able to produce accurate observational drawings, um, knowledge of materials and their skillful use, which of course is taught through Key Stage 3. So using those different materials, having knowledge of them and what they're capable of. Working with multiple mediums, materials and the, develop your skills confidently. Um, you're able to record your thoughts and uh, the creative process verbally. So talking through your ideas with the teacher as well as through your written analysis and in your coursework. Um, you're able to critically analyse the work of other designers and other inspirations. So you're able to talk about um, things that you dislike, you don't like, things that are, need improvement and that goes for your own work as well. And you can fluently and correctly use design and descriptive vocabulary in your written work. These are the things that we feel would make a really successful 3D design student. Obviously, some of these skills are continued to be taught through the year 10 um, year of this, um, of this course. But the more that you arrive with and turn up with, uh, the more successful you are likely to be. Personal attributes to bring to the subject include carries out all tasks with maximum effort and enthusiasm. You must have a passion and drive for this subject. You need to be picking this because you have a passion and a drive to do well at 3D design and be interested in it. You need to be able to manage your time well. There is a lot of work that goes into this coursework and you need to be able to meet the, these deadlines. That includes um, obviously working within the lessons, but also completing homework independently, coming in um, you know, and, and working with the teachers outside of lesson time, um, if needs be, to get your work done and to work on those practical elements of the project. Um, you need to be able to, as I said, work independently, that's within the lessons as well, and complete classwork and homework to the best of your ability, and be able to respond well to constructive feedback. Um, this is a course which develops your ideas and develops um, your skills uh, in different material areas and your teacher will give you constant um, feedback to ensure that you are as successful as possible. The GCSE 3D design is assessed through coursework. The first two set themes are con uh, completed in year 10 and into the start of year 11 um, and they will be set by um, internally by the staff um, and the teachers who run the course. As you can see, this makes up 60% of their final grade. So straight away in year 10, the work that they are doing, um, the work that you are doing is assessed and goes towards your final grade. The other um, assessment is externally set. So that happens in January of year 11. The exam boards will set a number of different themes that you can choose from. And then you will be working on your coursework um, based on that um, theme, which runs up to a 10 hour exam. So that exam is split over two days where you will be um, 
completing a final piece of work in that in those 10 hours so all of your coursework runs up to the planning and development of that final piece and then you get your 10 hours to um, to complete it you can see here some information from the exam board about the um, portfolio and the externally assess, assessed um, assignment you can also see obviously the breakdown and the um, the staff mark your work and send the marks off to the exam board in year 11 and the exam board will send um, a moderator to school to come and look at your work and to um, assess the marking of it. You can see here that the internally and externally set assignment are both marked out of 96 marks and um, they cover four different assessment objectives. Each of those are marked out of 24. And you can see here the top end of the mark scheme um, and what the, uh, the staff and the teachers are looking at when they are marking and assessing your work in terms of working out your, your final grades. So the GCSE 3D design, as I said, um, includes a lot of developmental skill work and the modelling and making of final outcomes. Um, this may be done within a sketchbook um, scenario or on different bits of media and paper and modelling um, and, and CAD CAM and uh, can be presented on presentation boards for the examiners. It's two very, very busy years um, and lots and lots of work going on inside of the class uh, and lessons and outside as well. So this is how the years are broken down for year 10. Obviously, lots of workshop and skills. Um, we're developing those skills early on uh, and selecting um, possible work that they may well be interested in. They begin their coursework, so their internally set assignment, and then they will complete a mock exam. So they will complete a mock 10 hour exam. Um, as well for final pieces and then they will begin their second exam project um, their non-assessed exam um, in year 10 as well they will complete that in year 11 and then as I said in January of year 11 they will be introduced to their um, externally set assignment and they will have from January of year 11 to April of year 11 to complete that. So a shorter period of time um, for the same amount of marks. And now that they're in the swing of things and they know what the expectations are, um, that is then taken in in April and the marks go off to the exam board in May of year 11. For each of the pieces of coursework, there are um, elements which must be included. Here's an example of some presentation boards and some work that went on to presentation boards, as well as sketchbook work a little bit further on in this video. So you can see that all of the coursework has got to include written analysis and designer and inspiration responses. It's got to include observational studies in different media that could be on the computer or it could be through sketching, um, but it must include at least some hand drawn images. Um, original photographs taken by yourselves, um, potential Photoshop and CAD manipulation of those photographs, annotation of your work to explain to the examiner at each point what you are doing and how you are developing your designs, and then of course the final outcomes. Over the next few sets of slides, um, you will be able to see a number of student pieces of work um, that have been set around lots and lots of different themes um, over the past couple of years. The sustained project in year 10 and 11 is much um, longer and larger than the supporting project. So it really needs to be something that um, really takes your interest and inspires you. Um, and you are looking at producing work which will go on to 12 A2 presentation boards. Um, there are lots of these up in the art rooms if you want to go and have a look what that looks like in terms of the quantity of work that needs to be produced. Um, other than that, it is looking at a full sketchbook, um, an A3, normally a full A3 sketchbook of your work. These include similar things, so written analysis, designer responses, observational drawings, photographs, manipulation, obviously model making and photographing your journey and annotations and final outcomes. Over the next 
um, few slides, you can see a real variety in how students have um, developed their ideas and their work using different media, testing um, materials out, talking about them, and you can see how they've developed these into the final product. So the Kingfisher example here is a, a great example of a highly graded piece of work. You can also see here some um, starting points, so some designers, some design periods in time, um, and some examples of developed ideas and written analysis, as well as manufacturing that has gone on in the academy, in the workshop, and through the use of CAD CAM over the last couple of years. Um, so using the laser cutter and the 3D printer and that software is something that you need to be able to develop your skills in and obviously researching um, designers and looking into into their work and how it inspires your further work as well. So have a little scan through all of the images you can see um, over the next couple of slides of previous students work. It is really important to be aware that written work is also involved in this course and you need to be able to really um, talk about your inspirations and use the correct vocabulary in terms of your art and design vocabulary to describe work, to talk about your influences, what you like and dislike about it, but also to um, discuss your own personal um, design journey with the examiner and to be able to put that into words, whether that's in a sketchbook or whether that's typing up and putting it onto your presentation boards. As previously mentioned, in January of Year 11, students will start their externally a set assignment, very similar um, in terms of what that needs to include, but obviously a much shorter period of time. So um, students often stay and work in lunch times and complete work in art club and stay after schools to ensure that they have got the required resources and the help from, from the staff that, that they need to be successful. So um, just to reiterate again, that obviously, you need to really have a passion and a drive for this subject to um, sustain these projects and to do really well in them. Um, we really want to see what interests you um, with the externally set assignment because you are allowed to obviously pick your chosen theme out of um, approximately six to eight that the exam board give you.
reasons to choose this subject. So you need to obviously be able to like the subject. Please don't select the subject if it is something that is the only thing left in this uh, in this bracket because um, it does take a lot of work and a lot of effort to um, to succeed in a subject like this. Um, you need to find it interesting. If you don't find it interesting, then you are um, you know you're going to find yourself. Um, quite bored within the subject within those lessons when we're asking you to complete work and make things so please do make sure that it's something that you find really interesting you enjoy it and you want to be successful we we want students on our course who want to do well in this course um, you are selecting this GCSE and uh, and therefore we are looking at your target grades and we are thinking what can we get from this student how successful can they be and pushing you at every possible possible moment to ensure that you are getting the best grade possible in every single piece of work that you do you need to have some skill level within the subject obviously there's lots of different things that we will teach you along the way um, but you are coming to us after three years of design and technology after art, three years of art um, and you will have lots of skills already you need to be able to build upon those skills um, and of course maybe um, complete some of these things outside of school so you might have some hobbies within those skill sets outside of school which will help you tremendously within this subject um, you need to make sure that you are aware of the commitment in terms of time and in some respects costs and um, the school provides um, everything that you possibly need to be successful in this that's not something that you need to worry about but depending on what um, direction you want to take your projects in um, can obviously mean that your commitments might be that you need to use the workshop or the laser cutter so therefore you will need to uh, to be in school to do that because obviously you, you don't have those things at home um, make sure it's the right level of qualification for you and the learning style for you uh, there is a lot of independent work within this especially when we get to year 11 um, and you need to be able to manage your own time really well you need to be able to you know be checking your planner organizing yourself be prepared for lessons and making sure you've got everything with you so that you're not missing any learning time if this is something you want to do in the future and study um, at A level or at BTEC level after um, year 11, um, there are lots of amazing careers that it is relevant to and there are loads of courses at post 16 level that you could go on to study having done 3D design as well. And the last thing there, as I've mentioned many times, is that you're willing to put in the extra time because obviously this subject is there's a lot of design and a making going on and um, you will need to spend some of your own free time doing that as well.